Hello everybody, I thought it was about time to give an update on the fuel injection system that I'm retrofitting on to my 1989 Honda Pacific Coast. Here it is in the garage, it's about probably half done. You can see the maze of wires that I'm installing for various sensors and to actuate the ignition system and other such things. Up here you can see there's no more carburetor. I'm uh, getting ready to trim these guys. These are um, fuel filler um, hoses that I'll trim down to use to uh, route to the throttle bodies that I've gotten from a 2010 Honda Fury. That's a VT 1300 CXA, not the particular bike I got. So this is here the actual injector manifold, intake manifold. And then on the front of that sticks the throttle body. And as luck would have it, the um, thing that actuates the throttle and throttle body is just about the same size as what's on the Pacific Coast. So I'll be able to use the same cable system to be able to run the throttle body. Now this, uh, the VT1300 CXA uses a um, stepper motor for the idle air control valve, which would go right here. But the micro skirt, which I'm using as the engine ECU, uh, cannot run a stepper motor without adding some circuitry, which I am unable to do because my soldering skills aren't good enough to work on very fine pitched um, surface mount equipment. So instead, I've just ordered up a used Bosch two-wire pulse with modulated uh, idle air control valve that I'll be grafting onto that system. For the air intake, for the air cleaner, I've got this uni filter. Uh, it was pretty cheap off Amazon. I'll put the part number up on my website eventually. Come on over to this side. You can see that I have hacked into place the fuel pump from a VT1300 CXA onto Fury. And down here, this is the connector where the micro squirt will eventually go next to the fuel pump. Back there, kind of hard to see, behind the connector is the fuel filter. I suspect I'm going to have to put in a secondary fuel pump to get the fuel to the high pressure pump that I installed. The Pacific Coast fuel pump that I have, I'm, I'm suspicious that it may be going bad, which is why I was having problems with the carbs flooding and filling the bike with fuel on the outside of the engine. Um, so I'll probably end up having to buy a, um, a fuel pump just from an automotive store. There's some that are about the right size for the job, although it'll take a little more amperage away from the already underpowered Pacific Coast. And you can see here these two hoses. This one here is the fuel return line. So that's for fuel that goes into the fuel pump, but that's not needed on the high pressure side. It gets low pressure pumped out of there up here through the gas cap, which I've modified, and then through a hose down into the fuel tank. That also acts as a way to cool that fuel pump. And the other line coming up here is a high pressure line. It's ending here right now, but eventually I'll hook up the correct stuff to be able to plumb it into the fuel injectors. And over here, you can see that I've cut into one of the um, coolant lines that goes into the front engine head to install a coolant temperature sensor. Now this will slow down a little bit the flow of coolant into the front head, but I don't think it's going to be enough to cause a big problem um, as long as I don't really abuse the bike in the future. Up here, you can see where I installed the innovative uh, wideband O2 sensor uh, gauge. This will tell me if I'm at the right um, air to fuel ratio and allow me to run a closed loop cycle with the micro squirt so that it can help to tune the engine for me as I ride. Down here is two LEDs, one for acceleration enrichment and one for idle enrichment that the ECU will signal. So here is where I've grafted on the plugs for the fuel injectors. 
Let's see what else we have here. This is a secondary um, manifold air pressure sensor that I'm going to plumb in so I can read atmospheric pressure. There's already one of these built into the throttle body, uh, but I want a second one since I live in Colorado now where it's not uncommon to go from 5,000 feet to 10,000 feet in a matter of a couple miles. And you can see here my pre existing um, controls for my um, warm and safe heat troller unit. It's a dual unit to run heated clothing in the winter. Also over here you can see my idiot light and normal voltage meter that I installed quite some time ago. And up front here this is the on off switch for the HID headlight installation that I put behind the normal Pacific Coast headlights. This bike also runs full LEDs everywhere outside the headlights, so all of these are LED, all the turn signals are LED, all the brake lights are LED, etc. Down here you can see where I have grafted in the high, uh, wideband O2 sensor. I used JB Weld after I cleaned up this rusty surface for it. And I run the cable up, I have the big connector behind on, on top of the battery. Here's a, the connector harness on the other side and it runs up and over and then back under there to where there's the splices to get into the gauge. Now today I'll be tackling tapping into the ignition modules or our spark uh, generators through these two um, connectors. This is also where the sensors for the um, trigger wheels, trigger wheel that's inside the crankcase here come in. Um, there's actually two different Hall effect sensors at different differing angles which tell the normal ignition control module on the spike when to fire the dual spark plugs on the forward and rear cylinders. But I'm going to replace that with the mega squirt or the micro squirt triggering that and reading the Hall effect sensors in here to determine when to do that. At least that's the hope. I still have the original ignition control module just in case though. Coming to the back of the bike, you can see my pre-existing um, fuse blocks that I installed quite some time ago are now completely full and I actually had to put in uh, spliced in uh, fused wire for the O2 um, sensor and gauge and I've started sharing some of the other ports back here for common things such as the, the EFI here also has the voltmeters that are up front um, and the dash LEDs uh, and a few other things like that. <clears throat> so that's where I'm at right now. I only get to work on this in little bits and pieces but it is coming along and I think hopefully in the next couple weeks I will have it up and running well enough to be able to do some test rides and start the debugging process. It's pretty exciting as far as I know this will be the first Honda Pacific Coast with the original engine um, that will have fuel injection. Hopefully I don't burn it down in the process of making it run.